Hey guys, so those of you that have been following this channel for any length of time will know that I'm a pretty big fan of Anteogos. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Anteogos is a rolling distribution based on Arch with the goal of basically making the um, Arch operating system significantly more accessible to a wider user base by making the installation process easier and by making, you know, installing and maintaining the software a lot easier. There's a lot of people talking about it, there's a lot of buzz around it. Um, and a lot of people are calling it an Ubuntu killer because, you know, Ubuntu's got some pretty sizable issues. Um, it does tend to make drastic desktop UI decisions. It does tend to restrict a lot of users' choice. It has put what some people consider malware into their um, default uh, desktop environment before, although I guess that's a... I mean, it depends what your definition of malware is. Um, it was uh, an Amazon... I think it was Amazon tracking, actually, so I think there was like a significant legitimate concern there. Um, but I didn't use Ubuntu during that period, so uh, and they've turned it off now. And also, if you buy a laptop from System76, they also turn off the, the Amazon tracking, or did, but now it's, it's off by default completely. Um, and then, you know, Ubuntu then go into the mobile market, um, where it was, at least to me, is crystal clear that they should be focusing on the desktop, where they've clearly, and, and the server, of course, where they've had the most success. Um, and also, of course, a lot of bugs that surface in Ubuntu sometimes take forever to get fixed, it seems. So a lot of people have been telling me that Anteogos could be a potential Ubuntu killer. It could it could be the, the one that people go to because, you know, it's it's more up to date software, it has the it has more opportunities to fix uh bugs in a more expedient manner. Um and if it can be made to be just as or nearly as user friendly, well it's really a win win. And especially if you can do that trick where um you install um, Antergos to uh, like an XFS or a ZFS partition um, and then set it to do daily snapshots um, you've got a pretty bulletproof um, stable system there as well so and, and also of course it's worth bearing in mind that when people decide to move from Windows or Mac over to Linux one would hope that they did their research and know what they're going into and, and I've never been shy about admitting that Linux is a more difficult operating system to use than Windows and Mac and the reason for this is because you can do more with it um, and it is a system that's built and designed by you know computer enthusiasts so it will appear appeal specifically to that genre and there are companies that can come in and they can make it more accessible to more groups of people and that's a great thing and that's obviously what Antergos is trying to do but um, but with so many options available in the Linux world it can be a, overwhelming for a lot of new people coming into the into the world but a lot of people coming into Linux will be doing so with their eyes open and with the attitude of learning you know, with, with the sort of almost the admission that they, you know, they're going to have to learn how to use a new operating system. They're going to have to learn um, a new way of doing things and, uh, you know, and thus having signed up to the process are, are willing to go through that process. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling about this. And uh, let's check out the, uh, the installation process. Um, so you can try it or we can install it. I got to say, I love the default GNOME layout, this this beautiful uh, Numix, I think it is. Now, of course, I'm running this in a virtual machine. So if you do see, you know, not great performance, that, that could very well be the case. Also, sometimes if you see better performance in virtual machines, that might be why. You'll also tend to see fewer bugs in uh, virtual machines because it's just so much easier to test software in virtual machines. Also, just a bit of a side note, it supports Welsh out of the box. I know that's going to be. I mean, is is there anyone who watches these videos that 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 possibly catches anyone in Wales that speaks Welsh and would like their uh, Ubuntu also do it? I think most Linux distros actually, but I just spotted Cymraeg there. Um, is there any other languages? Uh, I don't recognise a lot of those. Yeah. So and, and you know, it's it's straight out of the box language uh, support there, which is great. Um, so we've got the requirements there, and that's good. And I like that, you know, that again, this is this is stuff that people like me sort of check off in my head almost as a matter of instinct. So um, to make it more accessible to more people, uh, I think that's great. You know, I, I um, yeah, it, you know, it sort of tells you what you need. Uh, also, one of the things I did notice is that when I did start up this live CD, it took a while to get this uh, Cinchi open this uh, this installer uh, program and the reason was was because the installer itself was being updated on boot which is a great idea 
although potentially quite complicated and lots to go wrong. But if it works, and it did work for me, that's good. You know, having an up-to-date installer, um, being just up, you know, having the installer updated as you boot into the live CD. It didn't take too long. I'm talking like 30 seconds. Um, and it did it in the background. Now, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. So, yeah, we'll do GB for now. Um, do London, London, London. Use network time. Sure. English UK, yeah. And this is this is again. Um, so you get to choose. You get to choose um, which op uh, which desktop environment you get to use. Another great thing about it. So you can use Cinnamon. Got to admit, certainly outside of Mint, I found Cinnamon to be a little bit buggy. I, I hear it's coming on quite well now. Uh, last time I tried it outside of Mint was was probably a couple of years ago, and probably for not that long, if I'm completely honest. Um, this was the first one. Cinnamon was the first desktop environment that came with, and this used to be called Cinarch. Um, now, some people have questioned slash criticized me for um, being okay with Arch offering up all these different um, desktop environments to install, but I, I criticize Linux Mint for having two flagship desktop environments, and also sometimes as well Manjaro that have two flagship desktop environments. So a lot of people question why, why am I okay with... Um, Antergos offering up six. Um, part of it is perspective. Like for example, I I don't criticize I I don't really criticize Manjaro too much for having the two flagship ones. I did a little bit, but um, but with Manjaro, I see it as being a distribution for like intermediate Linux users, users that would would sort of understand and appreciate the difference. And I guess I put Antergos in that same kind of category as well, where it's like, well, you know, I would expect most people to run this installer to know what Cinnamon, GNOME, KDE, Mate, Openbox, XFCE is. I would imagine that could probably change over time. Um, I do like that you could do you have one CD, one ISO that you download and install. That is really good because having all these different, you know, um, a lot not a lot of people off the bat are going to know. So you know, most people here could pick one nearly at random or do a quick Google search to work out what they want or have a recommendation or whatever, um, or pick the first one on the list, which will sort them out quite fine. I would assume that that Cinnamon is great. Uh, what should I go with? I'm going to go with Mate. That seems to work best on virtual machines for the most part. There is XFCE there as well. They tend to all go for a similar style, except for KDE, isn't it? Or no, that Mate looks like it's a a default uh, Mate layout. So yeah, let's go with Mate. But yeah, basically with with Linux Mint, which is designed at being the most like newbie friendly, the most user friendly uh, distribu uh, distribution out there, and it, and 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 the distinct difference they they've got to offer you is Cinnamon Mate. That's that to me, I see it as confusing. So it's not so much that they offer different. Uh, flagship distributions, it's that they pre present them as equals. Whereas, yeah, they do the same in Antergos, but it's like it, it's it's all it's a, it's, a, it's at a better stage. I think is is probably the best way of putting it. And again, I'm not saying that this opinion is super consistent because I am kind of second guessing Antergos's user base, which uh, which which I could easily be wrong at at any turn. So anyway. Um, it gives you also gives you installation options. This is brilliant, and this was this has been in for a while. It gives you a choice between Chromium and Firefox, or both. LibreOffice printing support, so we can take away printing support. Virtual machine, uncomplicated firewall. Steam, it installs Steam for you. Long-term support kernel. And again, an extra true type fonts. Arch user support. That's brilliant. I wish more distributions would do that, but I can understand. I can sort of understand why they don't in a lot of ways. There is stuff that can go wrong with it. If the installation doesn't work, you're kind of left out in the woods. If um, you know, so if you don't have the, the the right network connection, or if your network connection gets interrupted, you can be problematic. And once you've got the base operating system, up, you know, up and loaded, then you know, if you've got a, a solid software center or or like Ubuntu Mate's software boutique, then you know, it's it's nearly just as good. But again, if it works and it's and it has always worked for me, then then that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, Array is an install, yeah, and it gives you encryption options, and you can even set your home in a different partition. And then you've got. Uh, should we have a look? Should we have a look at? Um, okay, new partition table. Okay, I'm just going to select the default there. And we'll do new, da, 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 user zxt4, mount point 
we'll, we'll stick it all on one partition because it's you know this is we're only just checking out the the installation process for those of you that are more familiar with virtual machines than I am should I use swap in a virtual machine or is just like the the memory that I allocate it just going to be enough I've got 16 gigs I've got plenty of memory so I'm I've never really bothered with uh, with swap space unless it's part of a default installation so it gives you a rundown here location time zone keyboard desktop environment features partitions can't argue with that that's a great installer and then I'll, I'll just put in and then you can log in automatically and we can save that so it lets me save the short password even though it warns me that the password is um, is too short so that's pretty awesome so yeah so far so good on the on the installation side of things we're just basically waiting at the what can possibly go wrong stage so as that's installing let's uh, just have a, just a bit of a poke around um, so I've been using GNOME for, for a significant amount as my primary desktop environment over the last month. I'm probably actually going to ditch it in and I'm going to do another video about that um, for a really somewhat sign kind of odd reason. Um, not It's not necessarily related to GNOME. Um, but you got to, one of the things I like about um, Antergos and they use the new mix theme as you can see there, this theme is, is so much nicer than the standard theme that comes with um, Adwaita, um, which I think is what it, how you pronounce it, which is the default theme for the GNOME desktop environment. And that's not bad, especially the dark themed version of it. Uh, but Numix is just so much nicer and cleaner. I think one of the big issues with, with, with GNOME is that, or it's not an issue actually, but one of the things I like about XFCE and Mate is that it, you really only need the GTK theme and the window manager theme for it to you know, to properly theme up your environment. But with something like GNOME and KDE, you also need a specific theme for the desktop environment itself. So like, um, you know, with the top bar. However, GNOME have made it so that the top bar along the top, um, even when you sort of um, theme other parts of the environment, it doesn't stand out. It's just a plain black and white bar, which kind of goes with everything. But, you know, this looks a little nicer. It's a little less curved. I like the... Uh, the one, the single menu here. So it doesn't matter if you click on the the off button here; it just pulls down the menu. Uh, again, it's a, it's a tiny issue, but it is one that seems to come up uh, reasonably regularly among new users for me. Is um, if you've got a an application, so we'll pull up files here, right, and we'll maximize it. One of the things that, again, once just again weird tangent. One of the things I do like about it is that they've installed a few um, add-ons which make it more usable, user user friendly. Um, one example is the dash to dock here. Uh, I think it's got, yeah, smart hiding, which is quite good. And also, um, uh, what else, what other add-ons they've got here? They've got uh, they've got a few um, added on tweaks that sort of make it, but they they certainly haven't overdone it, which is nice. I think the Manjaro GNOME possibly is guilty of that. So, uh, of just like loading it on with, with sort of third, third party, um, add-ons you know and I get it it makes it feature complete a lot of people think that gnomes a little bit sort of bare bones in regards to customizability so but you know part of that is by design but they oh yeah they've got the minimize and, and maximize buttons there as well but yeah one of the problems that a surprisingly large number of, of users some of them being should we say more on the more elderly side perhaps uh, they often um, accident when they aim to click this X up here they sometimes aim to they sometimes accidentally click an X up here, or it also applies on the on the bottom corner, where as if there is like a, a scroll bar with a down button, and you're clicking on that, and there is an off button on you know in the bottom right hand corner, on you know if you've got a taskbar at the bottom. Some people accidentally click on that, so I tend not to have these on the screen. But if it's just a pull down menu, then you're not you know you're not accidentally going to do too much there, which kind of works. I don't like that they bury the logout. It's not an issue if if you're just the only one using your computer, not an issue. But if you if you use a computer that's a lot of people are logging in and out, not intuitive, I guess. But you know, this is nitpicking. I don't mind GNOME as a desktop environment, but I think it's probably my lesser favourite out of the bunch. Um I do like KDE, it seems to have um a lot of up to date technology and stuff around it. Um 
Cinnamon I find to be buggy. XFC I find, I find to be great, but it, it does seem to be a little bit stuck in the past now at this stage. It doesn't seem to embrace many new features. Um, but it is pretty snappy and pretty stable. So it's it's kind of a trade-off. It's like the LTS of, of desktop environments, of, of GTK desktop environments. Um, and i got to say, you know, I, I would like to see a few more QT desktop environments, especially as it seems that a lot of applications being developed nowadays uh, seem to be using the QT toolkit. And the reason for that seems to be, for the most part, that QT is more of a platform, whereas GTK seems to be marrying itself closer and closer to GNOME, which is okay for GNOME, but if but um like the developers of, of um the budgie desktop were saying, yeah, but the more GTK aligns itself with GNOME, the more difficult it is to have other desktop environments uh, built uh, on GTK, which is a little bit of a shame, but it's good that we've got alternatives and you know, so you've got QT. And uh, it, there is no real issues these days with running QT programs on a GTK environment or vice versa. It's pretty much designed to do that. We've got so, you know, we've even got programs to make sure that they look uh, like they belong. So, yeah, I gotta say, for the most part, um, for the most part, um, running Qt applications on on GTK is is fine. I've had a, you know, like occasional icon issues or, or what have you, but it, and there used to be an issue, of course, where um, you'd you'd have to install like a load of KDE libraries and whatever. But over the years, I've noticed that KDE and the Qt library set have done a pretty good job at making it so that you don't have to download more um, libraries and than, than you actually have to, which works quite well. So you can get some pretty lightweight Qt applications about nowadays. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it, I think Qt could very well be the, the, you know, it's certainly something that is, is significantly important when it comes to application development now. And it'd be nice to see maybe a few more desktop environments embrace that. Uh, we know we've got LXQT, but that's taking forever to um, to arrive on the Ubuntu scene. Uh, and I've not, uh, I've tried LXQT out a few times, but I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's fine, <laughs> I guess, you know. Um, there is a new one, I forget its name now, True, True OS might use it, Lumina? I think it is. Uh, that looks like it could. That, that that looks like it could be another sort of LXDE XFCE kind of um, Qt environment. So you know, and 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 that's where Qt you know, and that's where the Qt desktop environments could could do well is in in the lightweight desktop environments. They could you know they could steal XFCE's lunch um, because I mean when it when it comes to the KDE Plasma desktop, if you want a full feature desktop, um, can you really do much better than KDE if you've got the system resources to 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 bolster it. It's very customizable. It's not always the most stable, but there is an LTS version of the KDE desktop, so I don't know. Uh, I don't, let me know what your, your thoughts are on, on, on why you choose the desktop environment that you do down in the comment section. I'll do another video where I sum up all of the, the big, I don't know, ten, the 10 main, um, main environments. Uh, I'm sure you could also get like i6, uh, i3, and, and all that kind of stuff. I find it interesting that Manjaro have an i3 build that works really well. Actually, if you've got, if you're willing to 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 work with a tiling window manager, if that suits your workflow, and you've got like a crappy old netbook that's that's just lying around, uh, put the Manjaro i3 on it. it. It runs like a dream, and it's keyboard driven. So like on something like a netbook or a laptop, like laptop, um, it's it's a lot more intuitive. I've always found. So I think it's just installing the last of the systems now. Uh, how long did that take? Uh, my recording now is at about 19 minutes. And that's if I don't, uh, if I decide not to edit that. So again, that's not, you know, that's not a bad time to install an up-to-date operating system. Uh, they do say that it takes significantly longer because it is still, like it's downloading directly off, um, off the internet. So part of that is connection speed dependent. And I've got not a bad connection speed um, certainly seems to be doing quite well now. Um, and I would say when it comes to rolling uh, releases, if you don't have a great internet connection, stick to stick to LTS. Um, stick to like an Ubuntu Mate is, is probably the best non, um, non-rolling release I can think of. And the LTS version will be absolutely rock solid and require very little downloads to, to maintain its stability. Some, of course, there's always... Um, security upgrades but uh, but I 
maintain a number of Ubuntu Mate laptops and they are a dream to do. God, you're taking its time. Oops, I clicked on that. that was the wrong button. I meant to click on that one. There we go. So these are our applications. Comes with Gparted, Image Viewer. Oh, let's see, have a look at the logs. That's pretty good. Brazero. It doesn't come with too much, but then, of course, it gives you the option to install later on. Transmission, that's good. Uh, that looks like Totem, which is um, my second favorite video player, next to MPV, of course. Uh, Polari, that looks something that looks somewhat different to um, uh, to the hex chat that we're used to. And then there's Cheese, of course. Never got on with Cheese. I've never found Cheese to be in any way a usable. I've always gone with the GVC view or uh, OBS, Open Broadcast Software. So this has access to not only the Arch. Uh, repositories but also the AUR which is a community software repository which is absolutely massive um, and you do actually get software officially released through the AUR as well so it's often worth um, uh, enabling. Um, for example there there is software that, that I want up to the minute updates on and there is a you know there are versions of it available in the Manjaro um, and Antirgos and Arch repositories but they still it still takes time to you know maintain work through the system uh for whoever it is the package maintainer to actually make sure it's it's all up to date so um so you can get some packages from the source if you use the AUR obviously do some research before you do it don't just make that as a blanket assumption sometimes in the AUR you can find significantly out of date software that's no longer maintained as well uh the the way that you should look at the AUR is um is the equivalent of going of, of like the the windows equivalent would be just going onto the internet and finding a an a .exe file to download and um, and run that would be you know that's that's kind of what the arch is the arch can be very not the arch the AUR can be very dangerous um, if you're if you're not sensible, or, uh, or you know, or if you, or even if you're complacent, and it does, you know, the the AUR website does offer uh, information like when it was last updated and comments and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so it has completed the installation process. It took a while. You could probably tell from the time at the top of the uh, screen there uh, as to as to how long it took specifically. Um, it's it spent a long time updating the man pages, which I don't know if that's the kind of job that takes a long time to do. It was a weird thing to get stuck on, but um, I, I just waited it out for what like ten minutes or something, and then um, and then it just uh, rounded up. So uh, let's restart the system. Okay, so we've rebooted, and this is our Mate desktop. Looks pretty nice. It's got the consistent Numix theme, and it's got the nice... That was a nice snappy open. Sometimes on some distributions, the, the main, uh, Mate menu can be a little bit on the slow side, but not this time. Uh, so it gives us a Pragha music player, which is interesting. Pluma text editor, familiar, familiar. So yeah, looks like a pretty standard Mate desktop that just has a really nice theme. Let's... Uh, Let's have a look at the old control center again. Great control center. I, I mean, I, I can. Oh, and it's it's got Qt5 settings here. Oh, mm -mm. looks like we've got to set something like that up. Um, what about if we did um, sudo pacman dash s keypath x. And then password. Oh, misspelt. There we go. Just to see how, like, a QT. This might actually be a QT4 app, actually, uh, possibly so. Yeah, you can see the installation process there. It's uh, QT4 4.8.7. But let's have a look. I mean, to be honest, a lot of apps are built on QT, or, uh, you know, use QT4. Ah, see. Oh, okay, so we've we've hit like our first problem here. Um, no, again, I I don't know if this is going to be the case with um, with uh, other desktop environments. It could be a Mate thing. Not to worry. It doesn't look like a particularly difficult pro um, issue to remedy. It just looks like it's you have to insert a line into a thing here. But 
you know, last time I tried Antergos, I did come up against problems like this, which were just sort of uh, minor misalignments in configuration files and whatnot. So, uh, you know, there might be a time when when Ubuntu, uh, when um, Antergos, you know, is is completely free of all these kind of issues. But it is built on Arch. Arch is rolling, and 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 Antergos is still pretty new in the grand scheme of things as well. Um, and it hasn't had that much time in the limelight. Um, and it also is trying to keep down six. I mean, you know, what I suppose one of the things I will say about it is, you know, trying to have six installation desktop environments out of the box. That's a, that's a that's a big task. It's a big task. A lot can go wrong there. So there we go. Um, but what was I looking at initially? Um, appearance, look and feel, appearance. So what kind of themes does it come with? So standard mate theme, Mate themes. Really, it, they've they've put their their um their weight behind the new mix. Stuff, backgrounds tab, standard backgrounds. Oh, they, I would have expected uh, perhaps a nicer font there, but yeah. I mean, it does. You know, I'm pretty happy with 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 Antergos. If I ever ditch Manjaro, this would be most likely my next home, and I, and they're very similar. They're very similar. I like the the main reason I'm still with with Manjaro over Antergos is simply because I'm just more comfortable with it. Um, and, and you know, and and die, you know, uh, habits die hard. So, um, but yeah, but with Antergos, you know, you do have to sometimes dip into a config file or do a bit of Google searching to fix fix an issue. It, it, I think it's important to consider that as par for the course when it comes to rolling releases that sometimes something goes wrong and you have to fix it. Rolling releases by their very nature are more complex than scheduled releases and even more so than long-term support scheduled releases. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I uh, had a nice little ramble with you guys. Let me know um, your thoughts on anything that I've been talking about today down in the comments section below. Most notably, um, what desktop environment do you use and why? You know, what makes what uh, about it appeals to you? Do you tend to have a preference for whatever desktop environment is the flag you know is the is the designated one for a, for a distribution because that desktop environment tends to have more bugs worked out of it, it tends to be optimized it tends to have you know it it, uh, it tends to have better support or do you just scrap that and just install whatever the heck you want or, or do you do something in between do you find a like a, a desktop environment that you like that is either supported by the community or you know um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on, on, on the desktop environments. Been something of a rambly video, but I've kind of been in the mood to make such a thing. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.